The purpose of this video is to develop a new picture of a model that we can use when we're thinking about models. And we're going to be using this new mental picture of a model from here on out. So what I want to do here first is I want to remind us how to visualize a regression model as we've seen it so far. So let's imagine that I want to use my model, the FEV1 to FVC ratio as my continuous outcome. And I have some constant value here, and I have a second constant times my exposure variable, which is the years of smoking. And then I'm going to have the random component of the model. So if I draw this, if I draw the structural part of the model, and let's say this is the FEV1 to FVC ratio on this axis, and this is the years of smoking on this axis, if the FEV1 to FVC ratio comes down with more years of smoking, then the structural part of my model is going to be a downward sloping line like this. Now the random component means that the actual values of FEV1 to FVC aren't going to be exactly on this line, they're going to be around it with a normal distribution. Now what I want to do here is I want to think about what happens when we add another variable to the model? And we would add another variable to condition on that variable. So in my model, for example, I might be adding the continuous variable income. Now I think in my model, I actually used income as a categorical model. So I'm gonna use a different example. Let's use age. So let's say we're going to add age to this model. So in that case then what we would have would be we would have a second or third beta value rather times the age and then we would have the random component of the model. So this is similar to the shorthand version that we were using before. We saw this before. So let's put age into our visualization and let's do it by adding a third axis to the visualization. So this is going to be age and let's say that age increases with the arrow. So these are bigger ages over here. These are younger ages over here, older and younger. And the years of smoking is also increasing in the direction of the arrow as is the FEV1 to FVC ratio. Now, what's going to happen here is that now, because we have two predictor variables and one outcome, now the structural part of our model, instead of being a line, it's going to be a plane. And this is the equation for a plane, and the structural part is. Now, I'm not going to go over the equations for a plane. If, you're, if you've forgotten that kind of math, then there are a lot of resources on the internet where you can play with different functions and, and, funct and graph different planes um, by manipulating the values of beta naught, beta one, and beta two. So I'm gonna leave you to do that if you're not familiar with it. But what we can say is that if, for example, age had no association with FEV1 to FVC, then we would expect a flat line in this direction with age. It might look something like this. And so then our plane would be looking something like this. Let's try to draw it. That would be the plane if the age had no effect on the FEV1 to FVC ratio. So the, here the line is parallel to age. This line over here is also parallel to age. Now, what we would expect though is that, in reality, is that the FEV1 to FVC ratio would go down with age. So let's use a different color here. What we actually would expect is that the FEV1 to FVC ratio is gonna be decreasing with age. And so what our plane is going to look like then is something like this. 
It's a little bit hard to visualize, but the plane is now sloping downwards here and downwards here, and this one is sloping downwards against the years of smoking, as is this one. So this is kind of going back down and away, uh, away from this corner over here. Now, since that was a little bit difficult to see, let's use one of these graphing functions on the internet. And so I've created a graph of a plane here, and uh, I have created one, the beta naught value is two, and both beta one and beta two are negative five. Now notice that they use slightly different letters, letters here in this one. So our Y value is now called Z, and the X1 is called X, and X2 is called Y. Now over here on the graph, we have X, which is our X1. It's going from minimum to maximum value, so the arrow is pointing in this direction, the same as we had before. Here's Y, which is our X2. It's also going from min to max in this direction, so the arrow is pointing in this direction, the same as we had before. And the Z value is vertical here. This is equivalent to our Y value. Now, it's kind of hard to see from this angle. One of the nice things you can do with this website is that you can... Uh, rotate it. So let's rotate this around and see what it looks like. So one of the things we can see is that as X is increasing, the value of Z is, uh, or, or our Y, let's use our, let's use our letters. So as X1 is increasing, the value of Y is decreasing. And that's true in the front and the back of the plane. So if we turn this around, we can see that these two lines are parallel to each other. So the function of the Y value as a function of the X1 value is the same, no matter what the value is of X2. And if we spin around here to look at X2 head on, and there is that's the value of Y, we see that the value of Z is decreasing as the value of X2 is increasing, which is what we would expect because the coefficient is negative here. And if we spin this around, we can see that just as before, as this value of X2 is decreasing, the, the Y value is decreasing, in both the front of the plane, the back of the plane, these are parallel to each other. So the, the, the decrease of the, of the Y value with X2 doesn't depend on the uh, X1 value. So it's the same over all values of X1. And so this is how the function of the plane relates to the equation. Okay, now I want us to go back to our model, the FEV1 to FVC ratio and we have years of smoking as our exposure variable, and we have one conditioning variable in the model, which is age. All of the variables here are continuous variables because it's easier to visualize things using continuous variables. So, and we have an error term here as well. So what is this model actually going to look like? Remember when we had only years of smoking, we said that the way we would visualize this model is that we would have a line which would be determined by beta zero and beta one. And now because I'm, I'm excluding this part of the model age, I'm just working inside this plane here. Here's the years of smoking and FEV one to FVC. We said when we only have one predictor, years of smoking, that we think of it as this line determines where we put the random number generator. For example, we put it here, and then this will generate one data point out of a normal distribution, a mean of zero. Then we put it down here, it generates another data point, a mean of zero. Well, the same idea is going to happen when we add another variable. But instead of this being a line, it's going to be a plane. So let's draw that. Let's get rid of this stuff. So. FEV1 to FEVC ratio is going to be decreasing with the years of smoking. It's also decreasing with age. So that's not drawn very well. Let me try that again. Let's draw it. Draw it more. 
uh, more extreme a little bit. So this line is in the plane of FEV1 and age. Uh, this line is in the plane of FEV1 to FEC ratio and years of smoking. And so what's going to happen here is that we're going to have another line parallel to this one. So it's kind of going back in and here. We're kind of looking at the underneath the underneath the plane. Um, it's not drawn very well. We'll see a, a different rendering in a moment that will be easier. But the same thing's happening here. This plane is determining where we place the random number generator for a particular value of years of smoking and age. And so maybe we have one person, person number one, their sequence number is one. They have a particular value of age here. They have a particular value of years of smoking here. So we take this value and we go down here. We take this value, we go over here. And so what this is going to do is it's basically saying that at this value, where are we going to place the random number generator? Well, we're going to go to this point, and then we're going to go up to, until we get into the plane, and then we're going to put the random number generator right on the plane, and then that's going to generate one data point of FEV1 to FVC ratio out of the normal distribution. So it's exactly the same principle as when we had a line, but now we have a plane because the function has two variables and so now this is the function of a plane plus some random component. So if we were to generate a lot of data points from this plane, from this model, this is what it would look like. And so we would get data points that are uh, away from the plane that the distance from the plane of all the data points would have a normal distribution because these data points are generated by the random number generator, which is always positioned on the plane because that's the function of the structural part of the model. And so we're going to use this view. When you think of a model, we're going to use this picture that we have here, this revolving picture. This is the picture of the model that we want to use. This is a continuous outcome with a continuous exposure and one, condi uh, one continuous conditioning variable. Now, we will have usually more than one conditioning variable in our model. What happens to the model after that? If we add another conditioning variable to this model, say we added another continuous conditioning variable, a second continuous conditioning variable, this model is going to go from three-dimensional space into four-dimensional space. And so we can't visualize it because it's 4D. We can only visualize 3D, and we're here where projecting three dimensions onto a two-dimensional surface, which is the screen that you're looking at. So this is as many dimensions as we can get visually, but a model can have many, many more dimensions. Every time we add a variable to our model, we're adding another dimension to it. And so mathematical space can be have many more dimensions than physical space. But because we live in physical space, for us thinking about it, we're going to limit ourselves to this picture of a model.